and strategy. So here are a few things you can do to be better. Because again, it is basic in terms of English, but at this level where you are in your career, it's about the strategy that you implement so that you can be a better communicator. You can have better relationships at work, which small talk can lead to promotions. Small talk can lead to closing the deal. So if you need any other motivation, that's a really great one. A lot of times promotions are about likability, about connections more so than merit. And I, you probably have the merit, but you also need the social component. All right. So here, prepare. It is not that much. You don't need a list of 20 questions. You just need to prepare three and then practice it. I'm going to skip all the way to the end. Pra don't just prepare like, okay, I, need, I know I need to ask about the weekend. Actually do it. Record yourself. Look in the mirror. Actually say, how was your weekend? How was your weekend? Hey, so how was your weekend? Say it over and over again so that you can train the muscle. A lot of the English is in your brain. And then when you try to say it, the body doesn't react the way you think it will. So actually move it. Second strategy is be curious. So part of effective small talk, especially at the higher levels, I want you to be more into listening and being curious about what you hear. So for example, if someone mentions that they took their kids out for ice cream on the weekend, don't just skip over that. Really take a moment, really listen to what they're saying. Like, oh, oh, great. Um, how many kids do you have? Because if people share personal information, which is already something kind of special during small talk, and you just skip it, it's going to be perceived as that person is not genuinely engaged. They don't really care about me. It's just not a great vibe. It's a small thing you can do that has a really great impact. So be curious in a respectful way, of course. So don't be curious and ask things that have not been presented. It's the strategy, right? If they open up about a topic, then I find that that's a green light that you can ask a little bit more. Don't rush breathe. So much of the training that I do with my leaders is breath work because the way that you breathe really impacts your fluency, your delivery. If you're just like, how was your weekend? Good. Okay, great. And how's your week going? It's going to feel robotic. And again, disingenuous. I, my belief, the way that I coach is I want authenticity and genuine curiosity, genuine connections. It's not just about playing a game. It's about how to be yourself and how to bring out the best in people. When you're rushing through your contributions to the conversation, it's not going to create the connection that you need. It's wasted small talk. In fact, it can hurt you more than it helps you. So the tiny thing you can do there is breathe before you answer. So instead of how was your weekend? Good. How was yours? How was your weekend? It was pretty good. Yeah, it was relaxing. How was yours? So just by breathing, it also lets your brain be more creative, add those tiny like one or two words that make a response feel open instead of just the formula, the basics. Also breathe while other people are talking. <laughs> so what happens with small talk is you're you're already more likely than not, your, your heart rate is accelerated because you're already in this situation in this meeting. That's going to make you feel a little bit of anxiety. That's going to your body's going to think something's happening that's major when really you're, you're prepared for this, right? So the more you breathe, you decrease the heart rate, you decrease the anxiety, you're able to listen. You can't actively listen if you're not breathing and you're just thinking about what to say next. The more you prepare beforehand, the more you're able to listen actively, which means the more you'll be able to be curious. So it's a beautiful, positive, vicious cycle. And with the right preparation and training, you don't have to train intensely for the rest of your life. Really with a few weeks of, and I do mean weeks, not just hours, of really preparing for small talk, you're creating a, a skill that's going to help you for the rest of your career. It, it's worth it. Now here, almost last but not least, relax. Something that I do with my clients is I have them record themselves during meetings and send me the recording. And then I watch it either with them or with them and by myself, put it on mute just look at yourself and you can observe yourself during the small talk portion. Since so many of our meetings are virtual, this is great because you get the data that you need. Put it on mute. Look at yourself. If you're like this, if you're like this. That's not relaxed body language. Even if you're still a little bit insecure about your English, your body language, your relaxed body language is going to help you so much. You will look 
confident, even if you don't feel confident yet. So really take a look at how you sit or your arms crossed, like relax. And, and look, that might be a defense mechanism. So if you need to write it on a post-it note, breathe, relax, smile. You might think like, yeah, these are obvious things to do, but in the moment, I have trained enough people <laughs> to know that in the moment, all of that goes away and survival kicks in. So until you, you're really feeling good about it, write the obvious, remind yourself of the obvious. Now, if you're not, to go back to the smiling component, Americans are really smiley. And I know that that can be uncomfortable for certain cultures. So if you're from a culture that you just, smiling is not part of your, or maybe your personality, at least relax your shoulders and relax your face and sit up. That's at least going to look a little bit more relaxed and engaged. If you can, smile a little bit during the small talk portion, just to set the foundation of you being personable. Because look, you're not in a leadership position because you have no, you don't get into these positions without having personality, without having some sense of social skills, because leadership is a lot about the soft skills. So as you're working to translate them to be more compatible with American corporate culture, smiling a little bit just during the small talk, and then you can go back to your serious or, or more natural face throughout the rest of the meeting, but at least you've made the impression. You're, you're setting up the energy and interaction that's going to help you be more productive during the, the business component of it. And last thing is practice, 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 practice. It is not difficult in terms of the grammar. At this point, what you're working on is the comfort, the delivery, the intonation, and you want to practice. Um, you know what? I'll put together a list of what I think are some of the best questions for small talk. And again, we're going to be concise. You're not training a lot, but you also are thinking, all right, what do people like to talk about? especially if you know your team, you know, you can kind of skip ahead a little bit. Sure. Talk about the weather and whatnot. But if you already know your team or your, your client, do some research, go look at, at what their interests are. You might, we share so much of our personal life online that you might easily be able to find out that they're a fan of a certain sport. For example, you don't have to say, Hey, I saw you posted a picture of you at the Super Bowl two weeks ago on your Instagram. That's going to come across as you being a stalker. Instead, casually say, Oh, did you watch the Super Bowl? Oh, you're from New Orleans. Are you a fan of the Saints? Even if you don't know about the NFL, that tiny bit of research, it'll get them to relax. It'll show some commonality. And they're going, to, then you prepare the follow up. They're going to ask, Oh, do you like the Saints? Prepare for it. If you do, great. That makes it easy. You're like, Yeah, I really like, you know, watching them. Or, No, I'm actually a fan of another team. But, I think the, the saints are great or I'm from New Orleans. That's why I keep saying saints or you could say prepare like, you know what? No, I, I don't really watch a lot of, of NFL. I'm more into, I don't know, volleyball or no, you know what? I actually, I don't watch a lot of sports. I, and then you, you figure out, you prepare what the follow-up is. Are you going to stay on the sports topic or are you going to practice to navigate the conversation to a different topic or a different interest? So this is where it's the next level training. It's not just the basic questions. You also want to practice and prepare what the follow-up questions are and how you're going to navigate the conversation. You don't want to go too deep because again, the small talk is usually going to be before a meeting or if you're at a conference, like networking. So people are going to be moving. You're going to have something else to do. So you want to keep it interesting simple enough that it can be cut off so you can move on to the next item or the next event, but effective enough that you make a genuine connection. And I'm telling you, when you do this and, and follow these strategies, the connections that you make, the conversations that you have, the reputation that you build, it is so easy to be caring as a leader. And you need to, because you're going to make tough decisions at some point. You're going to have to give bad news at some point. You're not always going to have positive news to share. So the more you have these positive interactions, it's going to make the negative also easier. And you're going to feel a lot more confident and comfortable. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for today's leadership English tips. And if you'd like to apply for my leadership communication program and get in-depth training, check it out at tanyasuarez.com slash leadership. And remember, practice makes progress. We are not seeking perfection at this level of English, at this level of your career. It's always about evolving 
to become a better version of yourself. And you're not alone. I'm here with you and I'll see you next time for some more tips.